All right, my lovers, how you doing? I'm with Tim today. Hi. He's got his trusty steel steed. Ready to do some damage to That's the ground. Right. That's right, we are going bottle digging today. And whenever I'm with Tim, we just find some amazing artifacts, Victorian bottles, trinkets, toys, you name it, we find it. So without further ado, let's get some luck in the muck. I was just gonna say the same thing. <laughs> let's do it. Surface find, it's broken, but let's see what it's got on it. Oh, it's a little planey. Maybe a little ink well. Let's see what, uh, what lies beneath. Yeah, let's see if it's a virgin area, virgin hole. Pretty pattern. I'm gonna move. Along the way, it was moving already. First blood goes to Tim, as usual. Nice little um, elements implication, which was a muscle cure for achy muscles. A couple of jam jars. Yeah. That's a jam jar. <clears throat> I need to get my gloves on, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, wow, guys, look at that. <laughs> Just have a little dig here. Have a little spot that we've got. And um, yeah, this rolled out. Oh, lovely little blue. Not to be taken. How fantastic. Love these so much. It's so diddy. So cute, fantastic. How did he is that? So I'm digging in the swampy area today, swamp because there's so much water underneath, and uh, found a couple of pieces. Oh, that's just a make of a plate, but look at that beautiful little penny perfume. Handy because the water's here, you can wash them straight up. Uh, might have been a bit burnt. I reckon that'll clean up nicely. Look at that, that lovely and so well made. Seems to be in good nick. Love it, love it, love it. So this is what I like to call a lucky dip of bottle digging. You can't see bottles in the wall in this particular area, but what you can do, you can stick a fork in and see what comes up stuck on the fork. So here's a case in point. So I can't see anything down there, but if I bring it up after having a, a big dig, here we go. A lovely little aqua bottle there. Generic little bottle. It's got some weird coloring inside it. Maybe that's paint or some Victorian concoction. Label's long gone. Another lovely little bottle. Great nick. Lovely aqua colour. Yeah, late Victorian, early 19th century. Oh wow, oh nice, do you see that? Felt it with the spade. I think it's for the Galloways. Clean up in a sec. With the wood chemist. Stick around later for the clean up. Oh, so she's getting there pretty well now actually. Beautiful, let's keep on going. I'll just add this up, little teacup, clean that up for you. How cool is that little train? The Express Dairy Company Limited. Isn't that beautiful? 
The Express Dairy was founded in 1864 as the Express County Milk Supply Company, so named as they only used express trains to get their milk into London. They also made cream and I found a pot made using similar graphics but I couldn't find an example of my one. I think mine could have been a teacup. If you know of any examples, please leave it in the comment below. Shame it's not complete, but there we go. That's the way of bottle digging. 80% of stuff is broken before we've even pulled it out. Nice bit of history though. Take that. Oh, I just dug this out. I thought it was a piece of ceramic, but it's actually metal. And it's got it Marga. Margaret. <laughs> Margarine, Marg something. Oh, marine, margarine, margarine. <laughs> yeah, unusual that. Probably maybe a top of a, like a milk churn or something. Never seen that before. Yeah, doing says margarine. That's the best bit. How unusual. See if I can find out what that is. Pretty cool. So I found something really cool, half sticking out of the gloopy, swampy mud. I need your positive thoughts. I need you to come together and hope this is complete. Come and have a look. So there we have. Oh, it looks like a ginger beer. It is a ginger beer, but is it complete? Come on guys, positive thinking. Get in! Well done guys, thank you for that. Oh, you done me proud. Nice. J, nope, D, W, W, S, Limited. Oh, wow. Oh, almost dropped in there. Oh, I've got to go and show Tim. Oh, look. Lover and Lover Limited. Oh wow, so happy with that. I haven't had ginger beer in ages. Happy days. I won't, I won't pull that one in my mouth because I know the water's going to come out. Yes, that's what we like, that's what we do it for. Lovely stoneware ginger beer bottle. Probably, uh, yeah, Victorian, easily. Look up that company and see what they're all about. What's the betting when I show Tim you want to come over to my little spot? We split up because Tim really loves prospecting and finding the undug areas. So maybe he'll join me. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Found something good, Tim. Oh! oh. <laughs> you sound like one of the birds that are around here. Oh, oh. It's a DMWS Limited. Was well, it DM? DM. WS. Something water. Is it the Direct Mineral Water Supply Company Limited? Oh, nice. Um, it's lovely, isn't it? It's in mint condition. Yeah, happy with that. Well done. Thank you. Probably about 1900, I reckon. Yeah, good news. There's hopefully more where this came from. It, yeah, you got your prospect in this little spot. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be a. It's, yeah, a pay off, you literally get. A, yeah, you get a foot down and it's just. It's just. It turns into a gloopy mess. There's something there. Yeah, it looks like it was a brick. Yeah. Why well, would they need it to? Oh, that's got a little thing on it. Eaton. Oh, yeah. C&E of Eaton, that's very fancy. Well, to add to my little Express Dairy monogram shard, I've also found Cranston's Hotels. Nice shard there, and also London City Council shard. So even if they're not complete, still find some nice pieces of pottery, nice shards of plates, full of lovely history. We can research a few or one and just see if there's anything cool about what they got up to. This plate probably came from the Ivanhoe Hotel, which is a higher end hotel in central London. I wonder who snuck this out as a souvenir. Here we go, look. Another example of the old lucky dip. There's shells and oysters and 
all sorts. That means it's probably household stuff. And look, I've just done, done the same again. Pull this out, look at that lovely ink. That's beautiful. Nice stoneware ink, nothing on it. Really substantial, perfectly formed inkwell. Chain shovels. Thanks to Terry for giving me this this spade. Does the job beautifully. Look at that. Getting it all out here. Oh, there's that. Here's one. A little plainy. Oh, oh, look. Bit of blue. Nice. You saw that come up live. How cool is that? Lovely jubbly. It's got on there four ounce, little four ounce little chemist or something. Oh, the sun's come out. Oh, I love that. Perfect condition. Easy does it with the old uh, spades and forks and you get rewarded. Keep going. Can you see anything? I'll go through the spoil later as well. Make sure I haven't missed anything. A little um, penny perfume inks. Sorry, little penny perfumes tend to get lost in this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> wow, this place is packed. Nice little uh, Chianti bottle. Chianti, however you say it, Chianti bottle. Isn't that Diddy? It's like a little, um, it's like a little onion bottle. How <laughs> nice. Good day so far. Oh, there goes one floating. One just floated up. Little plain one, but the next one could have something on it. Sometimes what I like to do is take my glove off and just have a feel around. Because us mud lovers like getting our hands dirty. See if there's anything that's floating around that I could damage. Any little ones that are going to be missed by the fork. Lots of bricks, but I can only do it for a few seconds because it gets so, oh, so cold. That's pretty much, there's nothing little I can really feel. It's not there, but that's broken. Anyway, anything small or that poking out, I can just quickly grab. Oh, there's something, is that something there? Mm, feels like it's a brick or a plate. Is that breaking there? But that's as much as I can do before my hand starts aching with pain. <laughs> Right, gloves on, spades out, let's go. What did I tell you? As soon as I showed Tim that ginger beer, I knew he'd come sniffing around my spot. Like a, like a ferret up a grain pipe. <laughs> Good luck, old boy. Hope you find something amazing. I'll do my best. And you. We like the colour of this though. It's coming out nice and red, which suggests it's ash and hopefully not dug before. We'll let you know when we get the next find. Well, I'm doing the old... Uh, feel around and I pulled this out. We're drinking Tim. Oh nice. It's a nice ink or gum. Possibly gum because it's huge but mm. it's uh might be an ink. Is it aqua or is it green? It's a nice greeny acre colour. Beautiful. Yeah it's a nice one. Big one. Another a cool bottle. Giant, a giant cotton reel ink. Oh yeah cotton reel. It looks like a cotton reel. Beautiful. I'll take that. Skittle bottle, cam wall. I was taking there a water company. Beautiful bit of crud stuck to the side, but <laughs> um, it's a lovely bottle. That'll clean up really well, I reckon. Just get this rust off, and uh, it'll look perfect. Probably a bit later. What are you doing? Like thirties, twenties, twenties. All right, okay. Maybe late teens. Hmm. Thirties. <laughs> It's got some writing on it. What are you? Yeah, I can see hair restorer. Oh, I oh know. Hold on, what's that? No, I thought it said hair, but it doesn't. It says, uh, oh, I can't believe and read it. Uh, 
light for the What the hell does that say? Late for the sp spin? Skin. Ah, for the skin. That makes sense. L L Larola? I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to um, speak to Tim about this one. What you got, sir? Catch. Good catch. That is Lay, L A I T. Late. Which is milk, lay, L A I T. Uh, in French, it's lay. All right. Which means milk. Milk for the skin. Milk for the skin. Oh, that's and cool. It's made by a company called. Yeah, La Rolla or something. Yeah, La, La Rolla. La Rolla. La Rolla. So, um, La Rolla? La Rolla. Lay for the, lay for the skin. La Rolla. Is that, is, that French, is that French then, milk? French, yeah. oh, I did German at school. La Rolla. Yeah, you did but I still don't know what the German is for milk, so. <laughs> And milch, do milch. Oh, well, well caught. Caught it. That's why you have a, we're a cricketing nation, you see. We're good at catching things okay. without a big glove on. <laughs> good find. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Tim's got a little pot lid. What do you reckon, Tim? Plain or got printed? Be, got to be printed, isn't it? Go on in. We're due one. It's been too long. My wife Don't needs clothes. <laughs> my kids need shoes. And you need more in your collection. And I need hair. <laughs> Ready? Go. Oh, it's plain. Son of a gun. Wow, 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 wow. Son of a gun. Never mind. Next one's going to be printed. It will do. There you go. Tim's found something. A little uh, no spill ink. So possibly the desk uh, in a school or something like that. Oh, nice. Um, designed. So if you knocked it over, you didn't lose every drop. Actually, that's, that's really nice. Last little pattern. A bit unusual, isn't it? Yeah. Was that just worn away? It looks like it might be painted and that's worn away. That's cool, though. I like that. Nice if there's a name on it, wouldn't there? Yeah. No spill ink. Yeah. Or no drip. Or spill. Yeah, spill. Not too much ink. <laughs> but not too much spill. Nice. The no spill ones are those glass ones, you know, with the, the inside. Fun funnels inside. That's right. Yeah. Cool. Well done. So we stop for a little break now. Um, we do have a little sandwich swap from time to time. Mine is jam and cheese. If you've never tried it, definitely give it a go. And I think Tim's got something delicious as well. What you got, Tim? I've got buffalo and egg. What? Buffalo and egg. What the hell's that? Cheese and cucumber. <laughs> All right then, well, I'll swap you one of my jam and cheese delicacies for one of your flat looking rather healthy looking I think you'll find okay on a healthy whole meat whole wheat bread cheese and jam I'm still not getting my head around it but cheese and jam it's the future well Tim just yelped with exclamation a nice oh that's cool I believe it's a Holloway's it's either a Holloway's or a Clark's but it's got so much rust on it oh it's gonna be a Holloway's is it Clean up all right, actually. Brilliant, what well I mate. I'm well, well, stick that in there, some acid. I'm well impressed. Yeah, it's a good find. Oh, what well done. Fantastic, yeah, clean that up and we'll have a little close That's look at that. It's gonna be lovely. Right, well it's gonna need uh, Is this the sore breaths one? It is, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. That's a nice one. That's the excuse me, I'm sucking a lollipop. Get some <laughs> energy, get some sugar in me. Sore breath. <laughs> Good for your breasts. This is an awesome find. I just moved direction, didn't I? So I was digging, I was digging the dug, and then I moved to the undug, and that popped out. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Cool, cool. Is it gout? Gout, yeah. Gout and sore breasts. <laughs> and, rheumati and rheumatism. If you ask nicely, I might let you borrow it for your pile. <laughs> Tim, that's between you and me. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, we'll clean this up in a second and get some good photos of that. That is a really nice little, uh, unusually, unusual little find there. It's got, might have a little crack in it. Or maybe that's just a... Uh, got a little chip, I noticed, but it still looks good. I think it's going to clean up quite well. I think that's, uh, all that rust's going to fall out. Yeah, that's lovely. Well done, mate. Superb. We'll put that in the pile to be cleaned. 
Well I'm done. Gonna carry on sucking on my lolly. So just have this viral <laughs> bone marrow for um, invalids and children. Lovely jar. Pretty good nick as well. well what colour was it? I don't know yet, but I'll tell you when I find it. It might take me a little while and then you can roll this one. Well, Tim's found something, but he's dropped it. <laughs> a little ink. A little, little marking ink. So we'll see later if he finds it. Get your fingers in there. Yeah, I will. Lovely job, Lou. Look at that. Gloop. <laughs> There you go, look, there's a little fork there. Coming out the seam. Yeah, just a fork. <laughs> 100 year old fork. Silver, did it? Nah, it's got some uh, maker's mark there, but it's, it's obviously um, a base metal. Maybe electro plated. Hmm. Tim's going to try and uh, bail out and see if he can find what he was looking for. In the meantime, just find a little clay pipe. Oh, just a little plain one. Cool though. Love finding clay pipes. <laughs> so I found something with a name on it. Tim's got his eager hand out. He wants to see what it is. Uh, oh, something for violins. Strings. Manchester. There you go, have a look at that. I thought it was broken, but I think it's that's... broken, that's how they are. That's how they come out. Yeah? Yeah, it's a nice little find. Oh, it is chipped. It's got a chip, but it's still a nice find. Well, that's repairable, because you've repaired a pot lid before, haven't you? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, it's very nice. A bit of porcelain. I've never dug one. I've seen them dug, but they're, they're rare. They're rare, yeah? Yeah, they're rare to find. And it's all there. All, all the prints there, isn't it? Yeah. Everything you need there is there. Nice. I'd be fine. Never seen that before. Never even heard of it. That's the beauty of bottle digging. There's always new things to find, and uh, you think about the hundreds of thousands of artifacts and things that people owned. Violin strings was one of them, obviously is a bit of a well-to-do company. Yeah, I like that. Really do. Thank you, mate. Well done, good find. So, I reckon, and this is purely an idea, mm. it's for violin strings, and it's a funny odd shape, isn't it? Yeah. So would it have had like a, a sponge or a cork on it, mm. and the oh, oil, right. the oil was then... You, put, you had a bottle with it and the oil went onto the sponge or cork and then you went up and down your violin strings with it. That makes good sense. It's the right shape, isn't it? But yeah. Use sparingly for violins and your strings and use infallible oil. Yeah, so the oil would... I think you're right there. Yeah, it's a little... It's, it's very cork It's very tactile in the hand, so I've got, I've got up and down the violin strings. Like that. <laughs> cool. Definitely one. So as you can see, I've got a... An old violin belongs to my granddad, I think. Um, I haven't been played in a long time, but you can see that this would have, uh, just as Tim described, would have gone down the length. Probably would have been a sponge on, on there, and that would have helped oil up your strings. Probably back when strings were made of something else rather than steel or metal. Maybe they were made from cat gut, <laughs> or was that tennis rackets? Well, it's a funny noise, this violin. Do you hear that? I think that noise can only mean one thing. Hello? It's Nelly, coming to see what I'm up to. Hello Nelly Nelson. See you later then. Good done, good find. Yeah, it is, found it. Oh, you got it? Yes. Oh, well done. Cool, it's worth dredging all that up for, wasn't it? Oh, that was what we were looking for. That was what you were spent in the last... Ten, ten minutes, 15 minutes. <laughs> looking for. That looks to me like it could be green, what do you reckon? I'm not sure. Wait, is it aqua? Yeah, I don't think it's blue. We was thinking it might be blue, but I think it's uh, an aqua. I mean, it's a nice little uh, marking ink. So laundry, cloth, clothing, marking clothing. And why would they do that? Why would they mark clothing? I think they used to mark up the collars with people, like with the, maybe with a pen and, and people's names, like dip a quill in and put really? people's names or numbers in the collars. Oh. I, that's my guess. But I, I think it was uh, mark for marking up um, identifying clothing. Okay, that's really cool. 
Let's get in a nice little pole there now. What have you got there, Tim? Well, I think it's uh, might be a little mustard uh, pot. I thought egg cup at first. Yeah. But it looks like it might have had a little lid. It's just a nice little bit of blue and white, isn't it? Yeah, Pretty. sweet. Yeah, it is nice. Pretty little thing and not, not a pattern of... Hold it still for me. Not a pattern I've seen lots of. That's cool. Can't recall it, to be honest. It's probably just Victorian, but mm. nice. I like it. Oh, that's a beast. Oh, wow, look at that. Both boys. Hamp champion. The champions of London oh. and South West. That's a lovely one, yeah, that'll look nice, cut down. Really? That'd be a beast. Who said you can have that? You did, off the camera. I'm going to have a flower in that and go on my windowsill. <laughs> I'll cut it down for you if you want, mate. No, it's all yours. It's lovely, no? Yeah, lovely embossing. Oh, we got it there, Tim. We've just had, out of the same, an odal, which is, oh, uh, oh, 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 sometimes I have it on the bottom, that one has. Oh, an odal, we see yodel. Oh, yodel, yeah, sorry. Yodel, lady. <laughs> so, there you go. Odal, which was a tooth, I believe it's a powder or liquid, tooth liquid possibly. Hmm. Like a paste of some sort. And they made it from Victorian times right through. They may even still make it today, I'm not sure, but they certainly made it well into the 40s and 50s. You, you can yeah. get ones with a similar design which have got a little screw uh, end on, but this is just a push on, which is unusual. It's still got the uh, the end on it, which mm. is rusted. Nice Good. one. Nice find though. Well done. Oh, well, Tim's done it again. He's got something on the end of his spade. It's just fork. Oh, yeah, that's cool. It's like a barrel of some sort. And a, 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 it's a barrel of laughs. A barrel, hopefully, it's not damaged. And. It's a, some sort of mustard, I would think. What does it say? It's got writing on it. V, G, F. Very good fun. <laughs> and that would have been where the label went. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not seen that one before. A bit late though, isn't it? Because it's screw top. Possibly, or just, a, or just an early screw top. Obviously, it's a transitional point. Mm. But it's got, a, it's got the rough, um, if you look at the top, it's got the rough, the ground off look, oh, yeah. which means it's an early screw top. Rather, so it's than, still, rather than sort of beveled. Exactly. So it's not a 30s one. It's, it's more like nine, It's more like First World War, 1918. Cool. Same age as everything else, but just it was one of their early attempts at making screw tops. Nice no, find, mate. Thank you. Even the cow agrees. It's got a few bubbles in it, look, as well. Oh, yeah, definitely an early one. So look, this little uh, inconspicuous little lump of bisquare is actually a little duck or swan. And you think, poor little thing has got no head, but I'm going to take it home and fix it because this little thing does something really quite unique. Can you guess what it does? What does he do, Simon? He actually swims. No. I don't believe it. <laughs> that is quite amazing, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's going around in circles because he's got no head. He's not a headless chicken, though, is he? Nah, he's a headless duck. Or swan. But soon to be... I think he's a swan. Soon to be... reattached, rehomed with a head. That's pretty unusual, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously a little kid's toy. Quirky, I like it. Yeah, so we'll fix him up. He can have his head back. Unless it's unless we can find his head, but I doubt we will. Still a nice little upcycling project. And we'll fix Mr. Swan. Soppy sod and I. Falling in love with a swan. Sweet find there? Yeah, a little cute little find. I'll bring it over here then. It's a little uh doesn't look much. It's quite a quite a nice little novel item. Arrowhead Hot Springs. Yeah. That's awesome, mate. Double lip. I don't know what that little emblem is in the middle. Is it an arrowhead? 
Oh, of course it is. <laughs> I thought it was a map of a state. That's cool, we'll research that and find out what that, where that was from. This little pouring jug has come all the way from San Bernardino, California. The arrowhead is a famous historic hillside landmark that Native Americans believed pointed to the natural hot springs below that they believed had healing powers. These features were exploited back in Victorian times by self-appointed doctors claiming it would heal TB and other incurable illnesses and encouraged people to stay in their treatment room. Over the years, the hotel had its ups and downs, once with Hollywood stars staying there and then burning down three times. All of these hotel ventures ended in financial failure. If you'd like to read more about the springs and their rich history, I found a fantastic website. You'll find the link in the video description below. Oh, great little find there, mate. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Brilliant. Yeah, so earlier we were talking about um, non-drip ink wells and Tim just found one. Yeah, no spill. So, you can see inside, there is like a, a tubular funnel of glass mm. inside. So if, you, if it falls over, the ink doesn't come out at all. Oh. It's a really clever design. That's awesome. No spill ink. Hey. There we go, we found one. As we were talking about it, one popped up. Nice bit of uh, engi glass engineering. Absolutely. Oh, let's go and see what Tim's doing. Nice blacking jar there. Really cool, would have been used to make all your stoves and any leather. Nice and black. He said I can keep that one. Yeah, it is, that pot lid. Oh, go on. It's pretty. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well done, that man. He knew he wanted a pot lid. Look at the face on that. Yes. He, you called it earlier. You did say, oh, I think there's a pot lid here. I, I, said we should get, I said we should get one. It's, it was looking good. It was the last little bit of a, your trench. The day's long. Nice one. Quite a common one-ish, but very, very welcome. And then none of them are common, really, because they're hard to dig. Mm, that's lovely, mate. Oh, this is not just one you digger of the day, man. He was debating who's had the better day, and it was looking like it was me, but he's had a really nice couple of printed pieces. And uh, you've had some good stuff too, so that's what we come here for. This sort of thing is really what we want. We love all the other stuff, it's all got its own bit of history. But Tim is a particular connoisseur for the pot lid, so uh, yeah, let's just see if we can read that for removing tartar and whitening the teeth, and something else I can't remember. Proprietors W Woods, Chemist Plymouth. Well done. And it's all there. Well done, mate. Cheers, dude. Excellent find. Really good. Good day. You had a good day. That's your second pot lid, pot lid you've had out with, uh, with me, isn't it? Yes. And the last one you gave to me, didn't you? I did. Well, you had it over then. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. That might just have to come home to have a wash. <laughs> it's all about the pot lid now, yeah? Not me. Not you. <laughs> well done, mate. Great day. Right, so we're finished for the day now. That's probably the last one. So let's see what we found. A little roundup, shall we? Well guys, look at these beautiful bottles and curios from Victorian and into the 20th century, 1910s, that sort of era. We've done really well. I'm really surprised. <laughs> I'm always surprised when I come bottle digging because I never really spec much, but always come back with the goods. Um, yeah, we've got loads of stuff to show you. I'm not going to spend too long because you've seen a lot of it come up, but as I pan around, you'll see pipes, bottles, strange things for violins, this is really cool. You can see this is a little ointment pot that Tim found. And uh, indeed it helps sore breasts as well as sore heads and uh, bad legs. But um, yeah, it's actually from Oxford Street in London. And there you've got a woman sitting on a throne. Apparently there's other versions of these with, um, with her breasts out. So I'll show you another version of this pot. And it also does gout and rheumatism. So what an amazing ointment now. Probably did none of that, but you know, it's a quack cure at the end of the day. They made all sorts of bogus claims. So going around, I've got a nice little poison bottle there, not to be taken, a little penny perfume, a couple of inks there. Um, and I think Tim had another one somewhere, but a load of bovrils, the common bovrils, 18 seem to come up quite often. Lovely ginger beer from the uh, 
uh, direct mineral water supplies, I think it is. Limited, a couple of bottles there to cut down and upcycle if they're in good nick. More jars, water bottles, Chianti bottle, Viral, and some plain ones there. Oh, and some also some little uh, plates there with some various transfers on, which we may look into later. And even this lovely little pot. It was uh, such a good day, there's so much to talk about. And so much history there. I'm gonna repair this little little swan. Oh and yeah, we've got some other printed ones there. Look. That one's the full of skin. Yeah, we just had loads of luck in the muck today, so really happy with this wonderful collection. On a note about this, we th I thought it was uh, aluminium. I thought it would have gone around a, uh, like a churn or something, but I think it, well, we know it's actually terracotta and it would have been like a shallow dish. So maybe this was bought in bulk and uh, it's got the words margarine right around the side. So it would have been a massive, massive shallow bowl for, for margarine. So yeah, I'm spending too much time talking on that when we should be talking about these other amazing finds as well. We have this beautiful little arrowhead hot springs as you saw come up. And uh, yeah, more ink wells. So it's a fantastic day. Loads of luck in the muck, as like I said. This is Tim's little uh, dabbing bottle. Do you, what do you reckon that is? Do you reckon that's uh, colour? Do you reckon that is? Reckon Can't tell. Can't tell. Aqua with a bit of blue ink residue. Cool. Gives it that kind of look. Lovely. So there we go. I think we're going to share the Mud Lover Cup today because we both done really well. I was going to vote for Tim to be honest. So what do you think? Who do you think had the better day? Tim thinks I did, but I think Tim did. So we'll call it a draw, yeah? Call it a draw. Nice one. Well done. So I've given this little swan a thoroughly good clean. There's still a little bit of staining on it, as you can see, but I'm hoping that maybe I can give that a little coat of paint at the end. So now I want to create the neck of the swan. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a swan. It's white for starters and it looks to me like a swan. So it could be a duck, but I'm making it into a swan, a beautiful white swan. So I've got some copper wire and I'm going to put this down the neck and glue it in place with some epoxy resin so that that can be nice and secure so that when I create the neck, it's got something good and substantial to attach to. And then I can shape this hopefully as well and give me a nice basis for the neck. I've got some British air drying clay as well. It will dry quite nicely into the, in the right sort of colour. And I've used this before. I've actually made clay pipes using this stuff. So if you haven't seen that video, it's quite a while ago now, but it was quite a good video that I made making a, a swan clay pipe, funnily enough. So I'll put a link to that video at the end of this episode. Right, let's get restoring. No, it is in and glued. Just need to let that set now, and then we can carry on later with the clay. So while we're waiting for that glue to dry, I just want to show you this lovely blue bottle. You saw it come up. I cleaned it up, and it's looking really good actually. And uh, as it's getting close to Christmas, I've got another good idea. I've uh, put this out on Instagram before uh, last year, I think. I had the same idea, and I thought, well, why not show you guys who may or may not have seen that? If you want to go and follow me on Instagram, go along there and search me out. I'll be Sci Finds. Link will be at the bottom of the screen. So this is what I'm talking about, which they're so cheap. They're only like a couple of quid and they're LED bottle cork lights. And so obviously the cork is only a, a pretend cork, but it, once it goes in the bottle, you turn this on and it lights up. Beautiful, eh? So all we have to do is stuff, for a want of a better word, the lights into the bottle and it creates almost like a little fairy bottle. It's so cool, and also, because it's blue, it looks even better and more, more magical, if you will. So uh, I'll show you how quick and easy that is. And uh, yeah, it looks so good. And you just turn it off and turn it on whenever you're in the room. It wouldn't leave on for too long, because you, know, you might end up wasting the battery, but if you want a bit of that Christmas spirit, encapsulated in a beautiful Victorian or 1900s thereabouts bottle, then uh, you can do so with this little chap. And uh, I think it's fantastic. Put a bit of tinsel around it as well if you want. Do you know what I've been thinking? Um, I think I actually want to put this one on my eBit account just because I want to share the love as usual. So uh, I'll put this on there and um, complete with the LED. 
and um, if anybody wants a little Christmas treat for themselves or a loved one get in soon and do it I mean I'm sure it'll get there before Christmas let's hope even if not it's a nice little thing for New Year and in fact I actually had this on all year round because as soon as it gets dark this does lighten up the old shelf or dark corner and because this one like I say is blue it's much more unique than anything else and there we go look now I know this one won't probably quite fit because the neck is quite small uh, if you look down there look all the beautiful colors um, but what I think I can do I can just rest it on there and it gives the same effect yeah how cool is that I absolutely love it it's such a neat idea I might try and push a few of these down but like I said if you want to come and bid on this it's a bottle that I found you've seen come up it's dates from early 1900s and uh, it'll have an LED little light in there so how fantastic is that and I also want to try it on the other bottle where I think it might fit even better so here's that big lovely Rioja glass I say big it's actually very small compared to the other ones you get but again I think the cork is going to fit in there an absolute treat so uh, got a bit of water still in there so <laughs> literally just been cleaning these but that will dry off soon enough I do love this and again I think I'll uh, put this on the eBid page just because I want to share it and uh, I haven't actually got one of these myself I've, I've got a larger one but the smaller ones are a bit rarer I believe so if uh, if you like what you see pop on over to eBid all the links will be in the video description and you can own it again I've got two of these I've got quite a few of these LED things here I bought a pack of them so uh, each bottle will come with its own LED and you can add whatever tinsel or decoration or even hang it from a tree that you feel you like and there we go and we just put the final bit in and look at that isn't that beautiful so there we go guys how cool is that a nice little Christmas ready ornament or you can use it all year round either way I think they're fantastic so if you fancy a cheeky bid head on over to my eBid page now and good luck well I've left this to dry overnight done a pretty good job so I just need to now bend it into the shape of my swan I'm going to have the neck back a little bit coming around like that yeah I think that's pretty good Right now, just add some clay. Well, there we go. She is all finished. Looking very elegant once again. I was going to paint her, but I think I'll just leave it as it was because it kind of tells the story of her or his little life being thrown away, broken, and, and, and patched up again. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll just basically um, leave her as she is. So, what I'd like to do as well is share this with you. So, um, I'm going to be selling this beautiful swan 
or my eBid store, as well as the other bottles that you saw earlier. So crack on over there, have a cheeky bid, and you might be able to give this beautiful swan a forever home. <laughs> And until next time, subscribe if you haven't done, like, comment, and we'll see you on the next Mud Adventure. <laughs> see you later, Mud Lovers. See ya.